Pastor Eli Lietzow here once again. I think this is going to be the last time in January here. We're going to be uh, talking about the things of life. And we talked about uh, speaking in the public square and uh, uh, we had some uh, resources and books. And then we talked about uh, how we as individuals and how we as congregations can actually reach out and help those in need and serve our neighbor appropriately. And all of that is good. Today, I wanted to talk more individually and more specifically about uh, the, the, the sin uh, that, that's prominent here when we're talking about life stuff in January, the, the sin of abortion. But I don't want to hammer uh, the law because we all understand uh, that this is, this is murder. We understand this is the breaking of the fifth commandment. Um, and there's a lot of people out there, a lot of people that you don't know, uh, pastors. There are many uh, people within your congregation who have been affected by abortion whether it's uh, they have gone through an abortion, they know somebody who's gone through abortion, uh, their wife or the girlfriend has gone through an abortion. All pastors have those people out in their congregations, and we may not even know it, but we need to be able to speak then of Christ's love and Christ's forgiveness uh, to those people uh, in the pulpits, not just hammering uh, with the law of God. Those people are already crushed. And everybody uh, out there listening as well, I think whether you know it or not, uh, you know somebody or have a relationship with somebody uh, who's had an abortion. You know somebody who's gone through this. And again, I don't want to talk about uh, uh, whether or not this is murder and wrong and, and all of that. Uh, the law has already convicted you about that. That's what the law does. It crushes, it hurts, it kills and that's what it should always do, especially in these big things. So we've got this amazing shame that comes upon us with things like this. Shame of, of the mother who went through this. Shame of the father whose spouse or girlfriend went through this. Shame of the parents, the grandparents of, of this, this child as well. All of these things, there's this shame that's just covering, and we don't talk a lot about shame. Uh, we don't talk a lot in, in our Western culture about how this shame covers us. Um, and maybe it's because shame is something not so, we can't describe it that well, but we can certainly feel it. And certain sins bring more shame than others. And when people sin against us, we can feel the shame of their sin upon us as well. Something needs to be done about that shame, not just the guilt. And certainly uh, the guilt needs to be taken care of. And the guilt has been taken care of on the cross as well. But what about the shame? What about the shame that comes with abortion? Has Christ taken care of that as well? Absolutely. Absolutely. Christ went to the cross to deal with sin which means he went to the cross to deal with all the consequences of sin and have victory over all the consequences of sin. And that includes guilt, and that includes shame. Shame is this thing that covers. But we need to be covered by something else, by someone else. And so to those who have gone through an abortion, to those who... Uh, uh, had no others who have gone through an abortion. To those who have been affected by abortion in any way, let me speak and pronounce this gospel of Christ crucified to you. Christ is for you, even in this sin, even with this shame. Christ took that sin and nailed it to the cross. Christ takes that sin and makes it his own. That shame covers him naked on that cross, and now he takes his glorious resurrection, his glorious righteousness, and he gives it to you and covers you and covers your shame. And yeah, you may not feel that, this side of eternity. That's okay. Go and hear forgiveness of sins proclaimed to you again, and wake up every single day and make the sign of the cross, and remember your baptism to know that you've been clothed with Christ, not with your sin anymore. And then go to communion and receive Christ's body broken for you and his blood poured out for you. Because this sin is not the unforgivable sin. This sin does not damn you to hell. This sin is forgiven. 
Christ has taken it. He's made it his own. You are forgiven in Christ. Thanks be to God. Did we do good? Is that, is that okay? If, if you liked that, hit the button that says that you like that. Maybe even subscribe to see more of these. Even give. Help us fund this mission of making known the gifts of Christ Jesus to youth and young adults. If you like this video, check out our website, higherthings.org, and check out more content from Higher Things.